Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with another channeled celebrity video. This one is about a young woman who allegedly jumped to her death off the 29th floor, the floor she resided on, of the Orion in Manhattan, New York. Now this happened on January 30th of 2022. This young woman, Chesley Grist, would be turning 31 years old on April 28th of this year. She was born April 28th, 1991. Now I do not have a full chart for this young woman and Chesley was extremely accomplished. I've seen charts online where they put a late Cancer rising, early Leo rising based on her appearance, which I could agree with, but I cannot find the specific information. So I'm hesitant to make that call. However, this young woman was an accomplished lawyer who took a leave of absence for a year to do her duties after she won the Miss America contest in 2019. She then went on to compete for Miss Universe and came in in the top 10. And she also had a spot as a TV correspondent on the show Extra. Now that seems beautiful from the outside in. When you look at her, she was very good looking, very confident speaking, and very, very accomplished. So what happened? Why did this woman allegedly choose to jump off a building with all of this success in the first month of the new year? So I did not know who this young woman was. Again, I don't watch any of those contests and I literally do not watch TV anymore, but you guys kept emailing me about her. So I started to focus on her energy and it was coming through slowly, but here's what I got. So I'm gonna start just with what I got. I have to go straight up psychic on this and straight up energetic. Chesley's energy was incredibly different than how she appeared on TV. She was so much different that it was hard to understand that it was her that I was picking up on because she has a very strong demeanor. Now there's something very split in her personality. So she appears one way and she really is another way. So it, she was wearing a mask in the public. That was not her true self. She was a very strong opinionated young woman who shows me on the morning of her passing, okay, on the morning of her passing, she shows me that she could not express herself. Her mouth was covered completely early on in that morning. And I'm looking around what I believe to be her resident, residence, at least I hope it's her residence, and I'm feeling there are three people standing behind her. I can see breath behind her. I can see three people, um, three male people. Now, she wants me to go back to when she was a child. So as a child, she was sort of set up within the family construct to befriend an older family friend. So there was an older male family friend. And this family friend, and I'm not going at that in a weird way, but this family friend was very interested in Chesley, like very interested, wanted to groom her. Again, I'm not talking sexually. I'm talking business-minded, prepare her, almost like manage her for a beauty pageant, but he was significantly older than her at the time. I'm placing her at about eight years old when I'm seeing this, and I'm putting him at approximately early 30s. So I'm feeling like this man was very well dressed. He had a very sturdy, strong body. So he wasn't skinny and angular, and he wasn't all over buffed. He was very well cut in a suit and I'm seeing the material of his sweater and it's fine material. Okay, <laughs> what does that mean? I'm sorry, it's cashmere. I'm like fine material. Um, it's cashmere. Uh, so he's dressed in a particular way and he's very sharp looking. He's a businessman. He wears things like overcoats. He comes to visit the family. He's well known in the family. He is a family friend. He gives Chesley advice. This is where she's going in her life. She's going in this direction. This person's already in this direction. So she's doing this. So she was kind of groomed from a very young age to respond to this man's verbiage, his ideas, what he had in mind for her, how he wanted to respond to her in particular things. This is exactly the way that she was being raised. This is something that her mother wanted for her. And she's kind of pointing, when I say the name mother, and she talks about, you know, the letter that she left behind, which did not explain why she did what she did, only that the mother would receive the assets. 
that wasn't her doing. That wasn't her doing. I don't care if it's in her handwriting. She's talking about being split into two different people. I respond this way and then I respond that way. She's also talking about losing time. And as her mother describes her as a high functioning depressed person, which I take to mean something along the lines of being a high functioning addict, like you go to work, you do everything, but you have these outside exterior problems that kind of take your mind in different directions. She is suggesting that her mind was taken in different directions anyway, based on this grooming. So she was set up really young. It was forced on her, you're gonna do law, which I feel like she didn't mind the law, but I also feel like she didn't like the law. So like she didn't mind it, she didn't like it. It was okay either way. She wasn't necessarily sure about um, if that's what she wanted to do for her whole life. So being Miss America was something that she really thought would really give her a leg up in this world. So it was something that she was really honored to do. And she took it very, very seriously. They lied to her though, is what she's saying. They lied to her. And when I say what she's saying, I'm getting impressions put in my head at the time that I'm speaking this. They actually lied to her about certain things and the way that she would continue to work and how she would work. And when she had to hand the crown over, this was a relief. I have a sigh of relief because there was a lot of pressure on her. There was late night hidden business meetings for her to go in a different direction. Late night hidden business meetings with this groomer man. Now I get another man entering the picture when she's 16 and a half through 18, right in that age range. Uh, and I feel like he slowly worked his way in and I feel like he was somebody who was also very interested in making sure she reached her potential. How do we get this girl to reach her potential? We need her to climb in a certain way because this is what we need. We need her to be placed in this position so we can then place ourselves behind her. This is exactly what I'm seeing. And this man was very charming and very like, uh, oh my God, nicely dressed again, smelled good, getting a whiff of his cologne, smelled good, uh, had a certain way of speaking, charismatic, charming, sensitive, kind, business savvy, big time businessman, carried a briefcase. I don't think he was a lawyer though. Carried a briefcase, understood the law, had a way of being able to describe things to her. Uh, she liked where he was going, the vision that he had for her. We're gonna place you here. You're going to do this here. This is what we're going to do with you. That's kind of like a manager or an agent. And maybe he called himself something else behind the scenes, but that's along the lines of his, his like entrance into her world feels like that. So when I'm looking at the energy of that, she was very taken with this person and I see champagne glasses clinking and I do feel she had romance with him, but here's the kicker. She's got a split, split side to her. She's split in her personality. She may have had sexual things that she hid that she didn't think the public would like about a Miss America. And the only thing I'm going back to, my mind flashes right back to Vanessa Williams and the photo shoot she did for Penthouse or Playboy, I can't remember which, one of them, where she's doing a lesbian pose and I kind of flash right to that picture. So I feel that there was an issue that she didn't want people to know who her lovers were or who she was in love with behind the scenes or who she chose to have sex with, let's put it that way. And quite honestly, it's no one's business. Like that's your body, you can do what you want, right? And I feel like she wanted to keep this secret from people. So she didn't let people know what was going on or her close circle knew, but they groomed her to be in a very different way. And she was being groomed about four weeks to two months to four weeks before she passed away she literally decided that she was going to back out of one of the contracts that she had with this very, the second gentleman she met between the age of 16 and 18, who was friends with the first gentleman, who was a family friend, and they both were structuring her life the way that they wanted to place her in public, period, okay? This is what she says. I was placed, I was lied to, I was, okay, two months before she passed, there were some things that she was actually starting to not want to do. She's describing waking up in the morning and seeing things for what they really were. So she's basically saying she saw things for what they were. I can see what you're up to. I see what you've done. I know what you did. She was betrayed on some level through a contract that she signed. 
This to me means that they snuck some verbiage in there, some wording in there that shouldn't have been in there or an expectation that wasn't clear to her at the time that she signed it. Maybe she didn't understand what it was. You can have a lawyer read all the paperwork you want. You're not going to sit there and read 400 pages, I'm assuming. And so even if she is a lawyer, she's going to have to have that looked over because, you know, it's in the wording and it's in the timing and it's in all of these things. I am feeling with her, okay? I'm feeling with her like she was tricked. This was a trick. Somebody tricked this young woman. She was not given all the information. And because she wasn't given all the information, she found herself in a double bind is what she's saying. I was in a double bind and they had to take me out. She's making me feel like she was taken out. I'm seeing a hand over her mouth and I'm seeing her literally being removed facing forward. Um, facing forward. I can see what's coming up. I didn't do, she didn't do this herself. I didn't do this. I didn't do this. I did not do this myself. This was not something I did. I feel with her like there is a strong, um, I'm asking, I'm asking her why she would sign a document that left her mother everything, knowing full well that if she's not married, and she's not uh, bound to anybody that the next of kin would be the parents. And so the family would have something to do with that. So I'm feeling that that's something that she would have, the, the mother would have inherited anyway. But there's an issue. She did own things of value. There are things of value. There are things that she kept sideways that she had always planned to give her family. She was not planning on dying right now. What she was planning on doing was changing her life. She didn't necessarily want to do the correspondence thing anymore. She didn't want to do the beauty pageant thing. She wanted to go in a different direction, completely disillusioned, completely disillusioned. Now she may have been depressed and she may have had some disillusionment in her life. Um, <clears throat> meaning, you know, you do business with somebody and then you find out that they're a piece of shit and you don't want to be around them. Totally get that. But this disillusionment was heavy on her heart and she was backing away. I'm back. I no, no, I don't want to deal with this. So she was backing away from this. There was some kind of a, um, there was some kind of a deal that she made, which was not as it appeared, which she found out, woke up, saw it, understood. So one of these men betrayed her. And I think it's the younger one that she started, that she was sexual with at some point. The one she met from 16 to 18, I feel like she signed something with him or signed something on behalf of his advice. And then she understood that he was getting off of her back. This was all off her back. Who she thought were her friends and family are not her friends and family. Basically, she died a lonely person. Now, I'm looking at her energy on the other side. She shows... Now, as she's passing away, okay, so as things are happening... The first thing is, she. I, I don't believe the, the whole scenario of what they said happened. Um, the Orion in Manhattan is a 60-story building. Obviously, you're probably not going to go up to the 60th floor because it's probably locked or whatever. You, you reside on a floor, and I believe she resided on the 29th floor. And she chose to take that way out. I didn't choose to do that. I woke up in the middle of that. I woke up in the middle of that. She woke up in the middle of that. So there's some sort of either drugging or mouth is covered and it's frontwards. There's three men in the apartment with her and somebody waiting down the hall. And she's kind of shaking her head because in my head I'm asking... Is it on camera? Did anybody have a door, like a ring doorbell outside? I don't know if they do that in New York, but whatever, on those high-rise buildings. But I'm sure they have door cams, right? And here's the thing, and I, I hear this very clearly. There's, okay, I literally asked about a door cam, and I got that there's a huge connection to Oprah with this young woman. And so this is coming in due to the connection through Oprah Winfrey. There's a connection this way. I don't know what it is. I didn't even research to see if that was a thing, but there's a connection in death to Oprah with this girl. There's also an understanding that at times, such as Epstein in jail with people guarding him in the heaviest jail in the country, allegedly, literally nobody saw what happened to him. He ended up dead allegedly, and there were no camera and no film and no footage. The guy outside is watching for all that. That's what it is. She's going all the way back to her roots. She's talking about after she woke up in mid, in, in the midst of this, 
and understood what was going on. Oh my God. Oh my God. Understood like, holy shit. I've been totally double, a double bind and double crossed, double bind. So this is something to do with a contract, double binding contract. And she literally was double crossed out of her life. Now, I also get that it was a lot different than it looks and she was trying to get out of, she's shaking cage, rattling the cage. She was trying to get out of what she was stuck in. She was literally stuck in something that she's trying to get out of and being stuck in that, um, she literally was stuck in, in a, I want to say in a cage, just literally like that, where she couldn't get out of it. So she was bound in a cage. So she was contractually bound and in a cage. She was trying to escape that. Also, there was somebody talking smack behind her back, threatening her, blackmailing her. She didn't like that, but she wasn't really worried about it. She wasn't really, you know, worried about it. And there is a female friend with the name either Kendricks or Kendra, female friend of this. And I don't recognize the person, but there's an acknowledgement to this person. There's an acknowledgement to this person. And I feel also like she has a little bit of difficulty. She's putting on the glasses and she can see now. So she didn't see what she was doing. She woke up out of it. I almost feel as if her family was somebody that really pushed this to happen for her and introduced her to the correct people to have this happen for her. And as a result of that, she followed in thought with the family without her own thought. Like, I think I want to do this, but she shook her head. I crossed that line and she wanted to step back from it. They also wanted to, she's talking about harvesting her eggs. I think she may have put her eggs. She's only going to be 31. I mean, you can get pregnant between 30 and like 45. A lot of people do, so they say. But they harvested her eggs, or she harvested her eggs. She put her eggs somewhere so that she would have them when she decided to implant them. I really feel like she had a, a, a split with who she loved romantically, male or female, and I'm going with female on that. I feel like she kind of split down the middle of what she wanted. Maybe she was with men because it was acceptable. She needed to go out with them, but maybe she passionately liked the opposite or the same gender. I also feel with her, like when we're talking the splitting of the personality, the splitting, two different people inside of her, I feel like she was unaware of it at times. So it took her, she's saying something happened to her and something changed. She is basically, now I don't know who knows this, but she's showing me from underneath the belly button, so underneath your belly button, basically the lower chakras, but underneath the belly button on the backbone, on the, uh, on the backside. And she's showing me a shift in the bones. And when she, I wonder if she went to like a chiropractor or somebody that helped her with her bones, but it cracked and it opened up stored energy. And she started to remember things. She was having a very difficult time. They're not wrong in saying she was what we call depressed but it's because she was shown things that shocked her and it's actually not quote depression. It's a normal reaction when somebody does something shitty to you. So she had this and she spoke out on mental health. She didn't really consider herself to be somebody who struggled. She had struggled. She'd been told she struggled and one of her personalities struggled, but not all of her. So she woke up. It's as if her body was adjusted and she woke up. They put her to sleep with something before this whole incident happened. So she has vague recollections, but it's probably like being high on laughing gas. Either pulling out your teeth and you're like, ha ha ha, that's so funny. <laughs> it's not funny, but you're, you're medicated and you don't take seriously. This was something I see around her. I see this around her. So it's not as they describe. They describe what they want to describe. It's not that bullshit. It's not that. So the way that she passed is not the way that it was presented in the media. There's something else going on underneath. There's literally something else going on underneath. The soul right now is mixed. Mixed. Um, there's a mixed idea about what happened. And she's, yeah, see, what we want to call this actually because she's having a hard time with it in that she's talking about being laid, laid down 
really, really flat. I'm talking after she crossed over and that's kind of an oxymoron because you don't have a body, so what are they laying down? But she's showing me energetically. She was being laid down really, really flat and the energy was being kind of raised and pushed up. I think she's talking about as she left her body, actually as I'm looking at it, so she's talking about raising up through her body. That's what she's talking about. And she just was horrified. She was not present for when she actually did expire. She was not present for that, but is absolutely horrified as she peeks at what went on. Like I, I peek, I don't want to see. They are encouraging her to understand what happened to her. I guess it can be quite jolting because we're talking about a murder here. We're not talking about somebody who chose to do this on their own. Now, as she's describing her shock at understanding who in her life circled around like a vulture and a snake, she's also talking about Oprah. Oprah. There's a connection to Oprah with this young woman. I have no idea what that means. I didn't know that she worked with Oprah. I'm sure she's met her in the circles on extra or whatever, but... I'm not actually understanding the connection. She just keeps saying that. So there's a direct connection. She talks about them speaking about her. They speak about me. They talk about me. They pull my energy back. They pull my consciousness back to here. They pull me back here. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. They use me as a reference in order to pull me back here. And that is not what happened to me. So she's talking about that. She's also talking about when she saw who really did what. And she, it's, it's kind of humorous to her that she feels that she, very strong young woman, not how she appeared. I'm sure she appeared strong, but she's different. She's tough. Like she didn't take no shit. And she doesn't, it's just not exactly as poised as she appears publicly so she's a different persona in real life like she's a different persona a lot of her life kind of slipped by she lost memories of a lot of things in her life so to me what that's saying is that she was out of the vessel and something else was in the vessel because there's so many things she doesn't remember so many things tick tock time 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 her time was running out she knew her time was running out the reason that she had what they want to call mental illness at the end stages the last two months prior to her passing is because she was afraid. She was like, I'm afraid. I don't want this to happen. I'm afraid. I don't like this. I'm afraid. So she had a lot of fear in her life. There was a lot of fear around her. TikTok, the time's running out. She's showing me. And she really enjoyed doing what she was doing, but she was kind of done doing it. She wanted to swap her life out a bit. They were not going to let her. They were not. Okay, look, look. Did you see? Somebody's in the camera making it blurry. I'm just, I'm going to have to touch it if it, <laughs> if it doesn't go back. Hold on. I'm going to touch it. Okay. Let's hope it goes back. Did we go back? Oh my God. Am I still blurry? Oh, this happens. This happens. Okay, I had to turn the camera on and off again to get it to uh, stop blurring. That sometimes helps until they step in front of it again. Remember, everything is all energy, but she is talking about this didn't go down the way it happened. She was like a fish in a fishbowl. Everything was, she was caged. She was contrived. She couldn't get out of things. She couldn't get away from things. Um, everywhere she turned, somebody was watching her. So she's talking about being watched. They didn't want her to do certain things. They didn't want her to speak to certain family members. They didn't want her to have her own life. She wanted to live differently. I really feel like this young woman had a different passion for certain people like maybe she thought things in a little bit of a different way and so i feel like um i feel like she had a little bit of a different mindset when it came to certain things but i also feel with her that had she realized i okay this is what happened she's kind of showing me in her excitement in her trust of people she shouldn't trust that she basically um, agreed to certain things contractually. And as she agreed to them, then she began to understand what they were, are. And as she began to see and understand what they were and are, the restrictions, the, the, the chains buckled down on her and she couldn't get out of it. So she was lied to. It was contrived. 
she felt like she deserved what she got, but it was contrived, okay? So there's something deceptive about how she acquired what she acquired from the people that managed her or the people that, I'm gonna use the word groomed her, prepared her, prepared her for her life. This was a deception. And they speak about her, I think she's coming back in, it looks a bit blurry. They speak about her in order to bind her here, okay? She is shocked, like just, fucking shocked that she's not in her body. This is not someone who chose this. She didn't choose to do this. There's so many things people don't understand and so many things you can't see and so many things that go on behind the scenes once you sign a contract and once you agree to work for them. There's so many things and I don't think she's even talking about what I normally talk about. I think she just agreed to sign a contract to to present herself in a certain way and it was just too much for her. I didn't see this coming. I didn't see it. I knew my time was up, but I didn't see this coming. See, she was supposed to sign something else and she backed out of it. So she had some sort of a disagreement with one of those men in her life and she stepped back completely disillusioned. Okay, so this woman was completely disillusioned from it and she stepped back from it and that's why she ended up dead. But she didn't end up dead through her own hands, her own actions. That's not what happened. That's not what happened. It's not what happened. All right, you guys, once again, my name is Sloan from SloanBella.com.